All right, so in this segment, we're going to look at replication. Right, so now that the drive letters match, we're going to head on over to cluster even in the cluster manager. We'll go to disks and add a disk. Alright, so there's our cluster 3 disk. And we're going to go ahead and make it a uh, cluster share volume. Alright, so now we have our cluster share for the replication. The next step is to come up to roles, configure role, Hyper-V replica broker, call this one rep even, give it an IP address, Normally it takes a little while here, it says pending and eventually what it'll look like is this one where it just says running. So now what we're going to do, since we already have replication set up on a different part, we're going to go ahead and turn on replication from cluster even and replicate over to cluster odd. All right, so now we configure the server. Enable replication, we'll go ahead and use HTTP. We're going to allow replication from any authenticated server. We're going to choose volume 2, which is our replication volume. And we'll hit apply. So notice we need to allow inbound port 80. If we don't, then replication could fail to work. So I'm going to go ahead and compress the data transmitted. And I'm going to use Kerberos. So there's our replication VHD. We can allow for additional recovery points. Uh, let's just go with two. We can do the uh, replication. So how important is this server? We'll choose every four hours. Actually, just because this is a lab, we'll choose every 12 hours. Send copy over the network. We can also take a copy of it from external media. And we'll just go ahead and start the replication immediately. And hit finish. And I may have I may have botched this one because it doesn't have a hard drive, but what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this process over here on HVHost3. 
we're going to replicate this server, which is actually healthy and running. So we're going to point to the rep even role, which kind of reminds me of uh, what Hyper V or what VMware calls appliances, sort of. All right, so we'll configure the server, enable HTTP 80, allow all authenticated. And we'll kind of go through the same process with adding our storage. immediately so I don't have enough resources RAM wise to replicate every machine so that's why I just made a couple 200 gig volumes um, but in a real-world scenario you would have your nodes running at half capacity so that you could then replicate and fail over the um, sister node, if you will, from the other cluster. All right, so now we should be able to hit OK. And if we come to cluster even, we should see a server that says server 2012. And it's in an off state. So if we browse up, we'll see we have replication going, it's pending, it's receiving the changes. If we come up here, it's 2012. See the same thing, we're receiving the changes. So when this gets up to 100%, we will go over failing over replication. All right, so the refresh button over here to the right makes it look like our replica is complete. So we can do a test failover to see if it's successful or not. And it looks like we've got a couple recovery points. Let's just get the latest. So it's actually going to create a new VM and test the failover. So here's our test replication. I guess we can go ahead and shut this down for now. Looks like the NIC might not be connected on the test machine, which would make sense. I guess I would truly allow you to test it without 
impacting the other server. So as far as I'm concerned, this test worked. All right, so that wraps up our replication segment. Uh, we will be back for more System Center and Server 2012 related items.